problem with religious people is that our opinion of self and our presentation of self becomes paramount. Okay, so so if something's going to attack my opinion and I think I'm Mr. Mr. High and Mighty Hoity Toity Religious Zealot, if someone attacks that, I'm instantly offended and I respond with anger. My presentation of self, if something attacks how I look or how I appear in the public eye, someone steps on my long robe as I'm walking in the marketplace and seeking glory of men, I respond in anger. Why? Because whenever the scriptures contradicts what we think of ourselves or how we feel we're presenting ourselves, and it contradicts that, it attacks directly our pride. And that is the one thing that will keep people from getting saved. That is the one major and primary thing that will keep Christians from getting blessed. If you're saved and you're pride, ready for destruction. It's coming. Only by pride cometh contention. Let's keep that in mind, too. If you're contentious with your brother, if you find yourself always in a battle with some other believer, only by pride cometh contention. There's pride in that scenario. Where two can't walk agreed, there is pride. Every time. And us religious folks, we're, we're guilty of it every time. <laughs> At least more susceptible. Matthew 23 now. The Word of God, all it's doing is revealing what's in us. All it's doing is exposing us as being hypocrites. All it's doing is bringing to light the things of darkness. Matthew chapter 23 Jesus is going to start dealing with these scribes and Pharisees, reproving them. Matthew 23, in verse 25, it says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Right? So you got a lemon, and it's all rotten and disgusting and filthy on the inside. No good. But as long as that peel looks nice and yellow and bright and firm, you think you got something good. And what they do is they go and they polish that thing, make it look really nice. But again, what happens when it's squeezed? Oh, rot, mold, filth comes out. He's saying the same about the cup and of the platter. They're going to go and they're going to take some filthy, disgusting cup and they're going to wash the outside really good. They're going to make it sparkle, make it shine. In our lives, we'll go and we'll put on the suit, right? We'll go and we'll walk the walk and we'll talk the talk. We'll make, we'll, we'll vainly feign that we are something that we are not, but if we don't deal with the heart, the end result is always going to be embarrassment and shame when what's in our heart is exposed. Christ is going to teach them here, verse 26, Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of the cup may be clean also. You know what Christ is saying? Deal with your heart first before you try to become some sort of religious image, before you try to follow some religious pattern, before you try to make everything look good on the outside, deal with the inside, deal with the heart. Why? Because everything that's on the outside is just going to manifest what's in your heart, especially in including your words. People will get saved, let's say, and they go home and they still drink and, and party and gamble and do all the things that they always did maybe before they were saved. But when they come to church, they put on a nice suit, they, they change their language, they change their appearance. But that same person, the lemon, right? What happens when someone stomps on his toe? Blickety blank! Just comes out of them, right? Because that's what was in their heart. And we're awful for this. We want, to, we want to make clean the outside when the inside of us is full of extortion and excess. We want to make everything look good on the outside to those that are around us, make it look like we got it all together. We don't deal with the inside, and therefore we are just one decision away from exposing the truth of who we are. Verse 27 says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye are like whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones, and of all uncleanness. Even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. So what happens to these Pharisees? What happens to these religious zealots when they go and they try to show themselves in the marketplace as being clean and 
clear and righteous in the sight of men. What happens to these when something comes upon them that was unexpected? When pressure is put on them? When there's, a, when there's a, a hard time that comes upon them? When there's a squeeze put upon them? Hypocrisy and iniquity will just come flowing out of them. And this is what happens to the carnal Christian who's never been changed by the word of God, but only seeks to conform themselves with what the religious world around them shows them is right. It's what happens to them every time. And this is why in our circle of friends, this is why in worlds beyond, this is why if you've ever been around church in your life for more than a few years, you will find people that show up, walk the walk, talk the talk, look good, sound good, act good, and then they're gone tomorrow. And then you find them drinking, you find them you know, partying, you find them whatever, just out of church, you find them, you know, doing all sorts of things that the world does, it's because they never had that change in their heart. They never had God do that work in them, but they were always just showing this vain hypocrisy and this vain um, outward showing. They cleaned the outside of the cup, but they didn't take care of the heart. They were a whited sepulcher, so they made it look all good. But inside, there's nothing but dead men's bones. 